Welcome back. We're going to start right where we left off. In the last episode, we set up hot reloading with Webpack for both JavaScript and CSS using Webpack loaders. We looked at syntax errors in CSS and showed how they could be surfaced in the console. But there is an even better way to view syntax errors. And that's what we're going to get into now. Let's start our dev server. Now you notice if we make a syntax error in our main CSS, like leaving off a semicolon, it recompiles and immediately shows us the error in red. If we add the semicolon back, it compiles and is back to normal. You can also see that in the console in the web browser. But we'd really like to see errors right in the browser window itself. Webpack 2 added the feature with one simple property. In our webpack config, under dev server, add the property overlay true. Now if we restart our dev server and make another syntax error, we see that now we have the error in the console and directly in the window. If we put it back, we can see that we go right back to normal. That's pretty cool. Now just to make things a little bit easier, Let's add our script to a package JSON. In the scripts area, delete this test and add start. Within start, we'll put our webpack dev server command like we've been running in the terminal. Let's also add a build command for when we want Webpack to do a static build. All right, back in the terminal, let's exit out. Let's do an npm run start. Very nice. Okay, so this page is a little too basic for me. We're building a personal blog or portfolio site for a certain hero. So let's get our HTML file parsed through Webpack as well. Let's move the index.html from dist to source. Let's add some HTML just to fill it out. We're going to add a profile tag and place the h1 inside of it. Now let's add our index.html to our main.js. If we run the Webpack dev server, we see that we have another unexpected token, which you guessed it, needs an appropriate loader. So let's install that now. npm install html loader extract loader, and file loader. All right, cool. Now that those are installed, let's add them to our Webpack config. In the rules, let's add a new rule object. We're going to be testing for HTML. And we're going to use three loaders. First, the file loader, which will take an object of options. We only need one option, which is how we're going to name the file as its output. So this is saying, whatever the name of the HTML file is, put that here. In this case, it'll be index. The next loader is going to be simpler. It's the extract loader. The extract loader tells Webpack that you want this to be a separate file and not included in the main bundle JS. And finally, we'll add the HTML loader. The HTML loader does the linting, passes it to the extract loader, which tells Webpack to make a separate file, which then passes it to the file loader 
which tells Webpack the name of the file you want to create. Now if we restart our Webpack dev server, you can see that we have a new piece of output, index.html. It doesn't need to appear in dist, because it's being served in memory. Back in our web browser, everything looks fine. If instead we did an npm run build, you can see that the real files are exported in the disk directory. Let's delete those for now, so we're not confused as to which files we're loading. So what about images? Well, let's make a new folder. In our source, let's make an images folder. Let's cd into it. Now wget, and then whatever URL you'd like to point to an image. I'm going to use this URL. All right, you can see here we've downloaded an image. CD back up to Webpack course. So how do we get this in the index.html without hard coding it? It turns out if we point to the file in our HTML, like so, we can process this image with Webpack. Notice it's using a relative path in the source directory. We'll need to add a couple of options to our config. First, in the HTML loader, let's add some options. The syntax is a little weird, but what we're saying here is of the attributes in element image, the source attribute is what we want to target. Of course, that matches the element image source attribute. We'll also need to add a loader for our image. So let's add a new test for JPEGs. And let's use Let's use the file loader. Pass it some options. And that options will be how we're going to name the file. We need to set up a directory first. Then whatever name the file is, we'll just pass that name. Finally, whatever extension the file is, we'll use that extension. In this case, we're only using one kind of extension. But if we wanted to, we could use all the image extensions by doing something like this. This regular expression means find something with a dot, then find something with one of these three. This is the OR operator in regular expressions. I guess we're ready to test and see if it works. Let's npm start to start our dev server. There we have it. We have an image that's being parsed by Webpack. You can see that images is not dot images like before. Now let's prove this. If you wanted to change this, and instead of just having the name, also have a hash of the file, now we can see that Webpack emits an image with a hash. If we go back to our browser, we can see that the image with the hash has already been loaded. That's really cool. All right, let's leave the hash off for now. All right, next we're going to want to update the CSS. In our main CSS, let's add some styling for the profile. We're going to take the display flex box and move it into profile. You can see they're side by side. We want them on top of each other, so let's change the flex flow to column. All right, cool. Now let's style that image. We're going to give it a border radius. So it's circular. Let's give it a width of 300 pixels. Finally, let's give it a box shadow. All right, looking much better. Side by side with your editor, there couldn't possibly be a better developer experience, could there? 
In this episode, we looked at a better way to surface errors in the browser with Webpack. We practiced updating our page with hot reloading and included the file and extract loaders to handle additional file types like HTML and images. Next, we'll sidestep into Babel.js so we can upgrade JavaScript itself to the latest and greatest features. See you there.